Lee is in court to claim the court maximum of £5,000 for loss of earnings and the cost to replace his property, which he says was damaged due to his business partner's negligence. Defendant Michael says the damage was accidental and Lee should have had the items insured. Therefore, he owes nothing. Do I have Lee here? Yep. Splendid. And is it Michael? Yep. You met, as I understand it, in Nottingham. Yeah. And I'm going to use this phrase gently. It has all sorts of connotations. Um, you met on the scene. That's how I met Peter on the scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that right? Remember that night in Canal Street? <laughs> <laughs> now, what sort of scene did you meet? It wasn't the same as this one here. Oh, um, it was it was a battle rap scene. Are you a battle rap artist? Uh, I was about I've quit now, but I did previously at the time of meeting Michael. Yeah, I'm a battle rapper. You're a battle rapper. Yeah. How does that work? It's all pre-written nowadays, but sometimes you freestyle it. Do you I'm, freestyle I'm, it? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes just like life, just freestyle life and that. You know, just take take it as it comes. Are you doing an homage to Liam Gallagher over there? Um, <laughs> could be, yeah. I'm a bit of a dancer as well. Does that mean that you can simply improvise battle rap off the top sometimes, of your head? Yeah. Sometimes it's hit and miss. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I could say, yo, Judge Rinder, I like your manner. The way you deliberate in cases with that hammer. That's rather good. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you don't always compliment people, though, obviously, battle rap. You don't always. Out. Isn't it sort of... I met Hot Peter on the scene. He fiddled with my gavel. You know what I mean? <laughs> sick that. That's sick that. You'd smash it. <laughs> now, that was the point. And it sounds amusing, but actually, these are well-attended nights. And we joke around, Michael, but the truth of the matter is that there is real and genuine, and I've seen it, there's real talent that goes into this. Also, increasingly popular. People will attend, uh, people become increasingly well-known, and a number of people can go on to have quite credible careers. And you started, Lee, I think, to host a particular battle night. I think it was called Grassroots. That was in multiple venues around Nottingham. Yeah. Who had advertised them? Um, I'd advertise that myself through the Facebook page. What started off for you, effectively, as a battle rap entertainment night, ended up becoming what I'm loosely going to describe as a de facto business. And that's when, according to your claim, Michael came on the scene. You didn't form a commercial partnership with one another, but loosely, you effectively formed a business. Is that about right, Michael? Yeah, yeah. I was performing at, like, the first event, and I just ended up helping him out. It seems to me that you and Michael effectively created a promotions business. Did you incorporate that business as a company? In other words, did you set up a business in Company's House, or was it just a loose verbal arrangement between the two of you? It was a loose verbal arrangement. There was no partnership agreement between the two of you at all, correct? In writing? That's correct. No. At some point, you bought some property some things to do with this business. What did you purchase? Um, altogether, there was um, three Canon cameras, there was a PC, there was two speakers, amplifier, and there was a mixer. Um, all of that is, is very important for running the events. Why? Um, with the amplifier, the speakers, the mixer, if we don't have sound, because it's not just battle rap that we do, we put on a lot of stand-up comedy nights as well. Um, and we can't really have the comedians shouting over the top of the... It just doesn't work, so... With the cameras, we use that for promotion also. Three cameras, a PC, two speakers, an amp and a mixer. What I need you to tell me is whether you paid for it out of your personal money or whether that came from any of the profits of the joint business. Uh, the cameras, one of them was purchased by myself. That was away from grassroots. Um, the other two, they were purchased from profits. After the cameras, there was the PC that was purchased by myself. Two speakers, um, they were purchased by myself also. Um, the amplifier, that was also by myself. And the mixer, that was also by myself. Thank you. Can stop there. So it's only the two cameras. Yeah. 
which were purchased as a result of surplus from a night. Agreed? No problems? Yeah, agreed. Thank you very much indeed. No difficulty. Here's the thing. You had access and were effectively in control of all of this equipment. That's correct. Up until the beginning of December of 2018, correct? Yeah. Now, at some point, all of that stuff that you've just told me about, you were unable to keep. Why? What happened? Um, I was living in a shared house at the time. I had concerns for the safety of the property um, in the place that I was living at the time. Understood. Well, you were in a shared house and that can happen. So, there was discussion with Michael. I agreed to store it at my house. Do you live in a house? Yep, made of bricks. How yeah. splendid. Where, Michael, did you state to Lee that you would store it? I just said I was going to make space in my house and store it there. Five days later, you got in touch with Michael, did you not? I did, that's correct. And you wanted to know what? Yeah, I want my PC back. I needed that. We had bookings on the system. I needed the booking details off the computer, so I've asked him if he can kindly bring it down. Would you kindly bring my PC down? Yeah. At what point during the day did you get the stuff back? It was kind of late afternoon. Um, early evening time. Describe what and happened. And it wasn't all of the, it was just the PC that came back. So he's, he's brought that over. Um, we've plugged that in, tried to get power out of it. It switched on immediately straight off, so there's no power whatsoever. What was wrong with the PC? Full of water. It was full of what? <laughs> <laughs> water. What's water? Water. <laughs> it's, it's water. It's water, but pronounced slightly differently. It's from Nuts. I'm from, no I'm from Nottingham. I'm from... In Nottingham, they have water. They have, they have water, yeah. Point is this. You turned it on, it had water in it. Right? Yeah. You must have been a little bit surprised. I was a little bit surprised. Understood. What did you say to Michael? It was like, what the f have you done to my piece hey. of Oh. Like... You said, what the blank have you done to my computer, correct? That's correct. At that point, none of the other equipment was delivered. No. It was just the PC. Now, bearing in mind, Michael, you had held out and promised that you were going to keep this valuable stuff in your house, under the roof. How was it that water had got into it? <laughs> well, turned out I didn't really have enough room, so I thought I'd put it in the shed for a bit. I mean, I put a, like, a plastic sheet over it. Um, there was no room in other rooms to put it in access to the loft. It was blocked. I've got like loads of DVDs and all my like, well, martial arts. How difficult arts was it to keep? You've got your what in there? Like martial arts equipment and that, like samurai swords, because I used to like train in long fist kung fu. So yeah, it's, it was a bit a bit messy. Now that triggered in you a concern, and the concern was: look, if that's happened to the PC, the other stuff that you've set out must also be damaged. Did you ask Michael a question about that? I did, yeah. Like... And did Michael at that point, to be fair to him, confess that all of this stuff had been stored in the shed and the shed was leaking? Begrudgingly, but he did. Let's have a look at the shed. What happened to the shed? Um, must have been like damp and, and rain and it just, it must have got in. You well, must have certainly been aware in the past that you'd gone in to get things from the shed and it'd been damp. Prior to leaving this stuff there, what else had you put there? Uh, had kids' bikes and that. Didn't yeah. really just like stuff like that. Why not your other stuff? Why not move all the samurai swords and that sort of thing uh, in there? Honestly, I, I didn't want my swords to get rusty. That's a point. As is so often the case when I have a male defendant, you were much more concerned about the integrity of your sword than anything else. Definitely. Correct? Yeah. Understood. Michael immediately confessed there'd been a leak. He had tried to cover it. What did he say about the damage to the other property? He said he was sorry, but he said he'd try and replace it. What was the state of the cameras, the speakers, the amp and the mixer? Knackered. Knackered? Knackered, yeah. That's northern for broken. Broken, yeah, sorry. Cream crackered. I, yeah, it was cream crackered. Do all of these things no longer work? What's the answer to that question? All the items on this list, none of them are working. Why do you not owe all of the money for this? Bearing in mind, you promised to look after it safely. Um, just not been able to get the funds together. Can I just add there, some of these items, like the PC and stuff, it was also, it wasn't something that was just benefited for myself and Mike. Like, my kids used to use that as well. Believe um, you. Same, going on holidays and things, a camera might be used and... But nevertheless, at the time Michael was asked to store it, the two of you were in 
an effective partnership. And that creates a difficulty for a court in determining who actually owns the thing in the first place. You can't sue yourself, you understand. Yeah, Effectively, no. that's what you would be doing if this was you suing a company that you were a director of. You'd be suing yourself for your own stuff. That's what I have to decide. That's a thorny issue about ownership here. You're not just suing Michael for the full value of the property, which is £3,920, correct? That's correct. You are also suing for loss of opportunity. Let me put it in this way. Gigs were cancelled, correct? That's correct. We had one in December. That was our Christmas event that had to be cancelled. What evidence do you have of gigs that had to be cancelled um, or loss of earnings that happened as a result of damage to this property? Well, we've got, we've got a flyer here. Who's we? Um, myself and... Well, why I, do I care what we? Unless you're the royal we and you're the queen. <laughs> we had a battle rap! <laughs> We, sir, has a legal consequence, right? Because, again, it may be the case, sir, that you are effectively suing yourself. He's also lost out. Yeah, I was headlining as well. Now, you're claiming £940 for the cancellation of this gig, is that right? That's correct, yeah. What evidence have you supplied the court about that? Um, I didn't have any evidence for that. Why couldn't you have hired or borrowed equipment to complete this gig? We just didn't have time or the funding. This is called mitigating your loss in law. Now, what you've got is an amp, a mixer and speaker. You didn't need the PC. You didn't actually necessarily need all of the cameras. But being reasonable people and knowing people in the industry, as you both inevitably must, how challenging would it have been to have called around? This was only three days. You had at least 48 hours, to be sure and asked people to provide you this stuff so that you could have had the night. How difficult was that? In that situation, it was quite difficult. It was very close to Christmas, so a lot of the people that record for events, they're busy that time. They require more than a few days' notice. Next part of your claim, sir, <clears throat> is for £1,500. What's that for? Um, that was the projected, projected future earnings. How do you project that? Um, with the projected future earnings, we've worked that out. It was three gigs that we would have done following that during that year. Um, we've, it was roughly between four and five hundred each. That's kind of what was estimated to have made on that. So, as, as I said, it, it is just a projected figure. It's not a... Just a projected figure. Yeah. Now, sir, thank you very much. Lee, you effectively set up a joint business with one another. And that business was a promotions business where you had equipment and you would put on battle rap nights with comedy and music and that sort of thing. And I've no reason to believe that they were anything other than excellent and extremely successful and worth visiting. That's not the issue here. The issue here, very simply, Lee, is that you purchased equipment with your own money, mostly, and you gave that to Michael and you told him to look after it for you and for the company's future. That in law is called bailment. What that means is Michael is under an obligation, a duty of care, to look after it and to keep it safe. I have to determine whether he did everything reasonable to do that. I'm perfectly satisfied he did not. He put it in a leaky shed. I mean... Take... Talking! <laughs> no, no, you listen to me. I'm giving a judgment here. I have to apply my mind objectively as to whether or not it is reasonable to put expensive equipment in a shed which is likely to leak, which is the case here. Therefore, because he owed you a duty of care and he fell below the legal standard by being negligent, you are entitled to recover the money you spent on the equipment. Now, that's right in principle. However, the difficulty here is that what do I do if I decide that you both jointly own the equipment? And you would jointly own the equipment if you had established a business with one another. The odd thing in this case is because you have nothing in writing between the two of you, Lee, that's actually benefited you. And consequently, even with the cameras that were paid for as a result of some of the profits of your joint promotion nights, I don't have to take that into consideration. I'm satisfied that all of the equipment that was purchased, which was negligently destroyed by Michael, you're entitled to recover, which is £3,920. And that, sir, is the award of the court when it comes to your property. The next part of your claim is for loss of future earnings. 
in respect of a cancellation of one particular gig, which you've shown me a flower for, and projected income in respect of three more, which you believe you would have booked, but for the damage to this property. Sir, when you bring a case to court, you have to have evidence. That's the first problem when it comes to the cancellation of the gig. In addition to that, your projection of loss of future earnings is nothing more than a projection, and one which a court could not confidently rely upon. Therefore, I dismiss your case when it comes to the cancellation of the gig and the loss of future earnings. Your claim is for £5,000. I dismiss that and award you £3,920. That's the order of this court. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> he won part of his case and was awarded £3,920 of his original claim. Let's find out how both parties felt about today's ruling. In regards to putting the stuff in the shed, like, I've just seen the picture on there. The top, there's moss growing on the top. There's, there's no way that that's just, you know, happened in the last few weeks. I don't know why he would have put it in there in the first place. We just, just had a lot on, just had a lot on at time. I didn't expect it to be in that long. You know, they say grass don't grow on a busy road and all that, but it's just, it's just one of them. I didn't expect it to uh, happen, but... I, I think the way it's gone today, I think it's very fair. Um, in terms of the loss of earnings and that, I completely get it. I wish I'd have made the time just to clear the space and then it wouldn't have happened, you know. <laughs>